Welcome, Johan Stoking and Vinka Giesemann. How are you feeling after this 24-hour marathon? Yes, very good. Thanks. Thanks. We're, we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Feeling great. Good, good. Well, good morning to you, because I hope you got a, a few hours of sleep last night. Probably not much, but uh, it's the end of the day here in Australia, so I'm just about to wrap it up. Um, you know, I was thinking about this whole conference, and it reminded me of a quote by William Ford Gibson, uh, who's an American-Canadian cyberpunk writer. Back in 1993, he said, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed yet. And I think the Virtual Things Conference has come a really long way, especially in these past 24 hours, to more evenly distribute the future to everyone. What are some of the standouts that you think that this platform has contributed to more evenly distributing the future to the world? Shall I start uh, on? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know it's a very nice quote, and I think it's uh, it's very well aligned with um, with uh, with our vision is that we're trying to lower the barrier of entry for the technology, and then automatically create broader inclusion and make sure that more uh, people can get their hands on the technology, and that also brings a way more diverse and um, a, a diverse adoption. Um, so, and the highlights for the the conference was that. <clears throat> mostly that the the um, uh, the content was really hands on so it was really about output uh, creating uh, creating something showing how to create it um, people telling about how and showing how hard it is no like fancy uh, predictions mm. or fancy mm. fancy stories so um, so yeah I think uh, I think that was that, that was that was my take on on the last 24 hours. Yeah, I think um, uh, the, there's the, the yeah the, what what we all have in common in the Things Network community is uh, is, is is technology and um, but it's really nice to see how much people in the community want to share their knowledge and um, how how happy they are to uh, to contribute and to um, make sessions and to tell about their technology and to share it with others uh, so that they can apply it in their own in their own ways. Uh, that's that's great. Uh, I think Lawrence can also tell more about um, how many contributions we got for uh, for content. I think we could fill uh, easily forty eight hours of uh, wow. presentations uh, for uh, yeah, with more people sharing even more content. So that's yeah, that's huge. So we've kind of I mean, been we, we are we are just a platform, right? I mean, Vink and I are, are only facilitating this, uh, and uh, it's it's not much that we do here. This is really community driven. That's amazing. You know, um, that kind of makes me think about how we are in this, you know, you guys have really focused on what exists, what's possible now, um, show us what's really working. And that's the thing that's really attractive about the Things Network is it's you can implement it now. It's happening. It's working. But it also requires a kind of imagination at the same time to imagine what might be possible with these things that we're doing. Do you think we've struck the balance in this last 24 hours between the two, the, the imagination of what's possible? Think about what we can do, inspire others, yet we'll show you what we can really do right now. Yeah, I definitely I, I think so. Um, so it's need imagination. It's looking into the future, you know, future possibilities. And um, uh, I personally have a lot of uh, focus on technology and, like you said, on on what is possible today. Uh, but it's really nice to see people working on use cases, uh, you know, for for the community um, that uh, that make things possible that were not possible before. Uh, so protecting wildlife uh, or you know any you know societal impact use cases that we see on TTN. That's super super nice. Uh, but it's also even on a technology level, uh, it is it's it's fascinating to. To see, for example, that we broke the um, the balloon uh, transmission record again, uh, 775 kilometers. Uh, that's that's amazing. That's uh, you know the technology is is there, and um, uh, yeah, that's that's really good. And for me, it, so I as uh, operating the network, um, we see uh, 
10,000 gateways plus connected 11,000. And uh, for, for, for me, that's sometimes just a number. Uh, but when you see the balloon going up and you see all the gateways that are receiving that in Europe, um, that makes me really realize how much your blood, sweat and tears goes in installing those gateways. Uh, and people actually own them and they, they follow the traffic and uh, you can look up all the gateways and then there's a gateway on a ski resort in uh, Grenoble that picks up the message uh, that's actually installed by somebody. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, you talk about community. That seems to be the main. Sorry, are we going to jump in there, Vinka? No, I, I just wanted to respond to what you said is that is this technology push and then like a more value, business value pool. And uh, one of uh, the main contributors and, uh, and uh, of this conference was Irnas, a Slovenian uh, systems integrator. And they, they nailed it so perfectly. So they, they always are like at the forefront of technology, like, like trying to push the latest and greatest. But um, these guys always manage to, to, to make sure that, that what they do actually makes a lot of sense. And, and yeah, I think they are, these guys are super inspiring to what they do. Um, and their sessions are always super cool. Because I think that like when we've had our first conference in 2018, they, they already had a device that was able to uh, track underwater turtles um, and um, for, for science. And, and now, of course, they have a lot of com uh, customers in the maritime industry. So, so yeah, I think, I think what you're saying, it's a, it's a, it's a balance or it's a, like a back and forth between uh, value push and uh, value pull and technology push. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that is, that is definitely, I think we, we would be proud if that's something that really would be the output and uh, the, the, the subject that, uh, that our speakers uh, uh, have here. Yeah. Yeah, because they want to build those trackers on the turtle now. What do we have now that we can deploy on them, but we want them to last longer than the turtle, which is a long yeah. time. So yeah, it's yeah. hard to, to, to get that combination right in a scientist's or engineer's mind. Yeah. And you mentioned this is about community. You know, what, where can we track that balloon? It's going over all these different places. And TTN is really based on community. It's pretty much the core of who you are, would you say? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and that, that's also what we see uh, in, in these in these conferences, uh, and, and especially a virtual conference where there's way more interaction between uh, the speakers and the participants and the participants among among each other on the on the chat. Um, but yeah, it's it's a truly community uh, initiative. Like I said, we we only facilitate it, so the rest is it's everything is community. Is what you envisioned? Are we where you envision now? Are we ahead of schedule? Are we behind schedule with the community and the expansion? Where would you put us now? And and what reasons would you say for that? Yeah, yeah. So so I think um, uh, uh, I think that there's not really a head or not a head. It's like it's the dri community or the ecosystem is the driving force. So they determine. We just, as Johan said, facilitate and give the platform and. And basically with everything uh, we do and um, so so there's not really a uh, a, a, a like like uh, it's not a race right so it's yeah. uh, so so that is uh, so but I think uh, then another question if you would ask you and me five years ago that the things that would look like this then we would not have expected this that's that's for sure so uh, so it's, yeah, it's really cool how it's how it evolves, uh, yeah. Bigger than you thought it would be. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. And what do you see on the horizon for the Things Network um, as holding the most potential for growth? Where do you think you're going to see that growth coming forward soon? Um, now, so going back to your first comment, so uh, the future is here, but it's not evenly dispersed. Um, <clears throat> the um, I think what you see in uh, because we have all these communities around the world, they all are in a, a their own uh, maturity uh, uh, phase. So, um, for instance, if you see in the Netherlands, with there's a lot of gateways and 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 you see a lot of activity and you see also a lot of enterprise activity on the public network. And there's like so so and then you see a lot of companies moving towards also our enterprise proposition, but you see also in other countries where they're just exploring the technology. And the, 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 the interesting 
thing is is that where where some countries are more ahead of the technology or places where they they can pull the rest with them right like how technology evolves and so um um uh, so yeah that's that's a bit what to see cool thanks lawrence do you want to jump in there on any of those thoughts yeah like uh, i think there are some some nice things that have been said already is is where where we kind of see now how everything fits together, how the whole community uh, community like joins in together, and uh, I think we like we have thousands of people that, that joined in for the like the past 24 hours, and that's really nice to see. And uh, indeed, like we like we only did a bit of facilitating. We have a few minor sessions that we hosted ourselves, and and by far most is from the from the community itself. And um, yeah, like. I'm really inspired actually by all the things that I've seen. So I, I had the chance to watch most of it during the 24 hours. So uh, um, I think it's really, really nice to see. So just uh, just to be, be clear, uh, 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 Lawrence is in our, in our headquarters. This is not his living room, but and he's been awake for 24 hours. So, uh, so, so yeah. Big round of applause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the tech uh, like team too. Small eyes I, uh, I might still have. So, um, but um, <laughs> yeah, like it's it's been really cool actually. And uh, and uh, if I may, like I've been I've I've seen really cool, very nice things. From uh, like a home workout by Johan and uh, yeah. and Jan with like an uh, edge computing device on their arm in sheep outfit, to like the balloon that I don't know in total the message was picked up by 1,800 gateways within a couple of hours. I think it's really amazing. Um, I've been I've been really amazed by a few very good presentations. Um, Ivan Holt, he uh, he's like a developer that did a complete full run through about the whole development process of an end to end device uh, way better than I think we could explain it ourselves. Um, uh, I learned tons of things about antenna tuning. It was a bit of a difficult subject, but uh, at least it really like gives, a, gives, an, gives some insight into like this development process. And, um, and and actually, just now before this uh, this session, I uh, I, I uh, was listening along with uh, with Lacuna Space, and uh, they even did a live demo um, of like a message sent to a satellite, uh, forwarded to the packet broker, um, going back to the like the, the normal console. So uh, it's it's really cool how that everything uh, fits together. What about you guys? Do you have any standout presentations that you learned something that you were surprised about? Or did you sort of know it before we went in? <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, whoa. I, I think that. a lot of the uh, a lot of content is um, uh, what I'm what I'm mostly surprised about is is, the, is indeed the quality of the content and, and seeing it all together. Uh, so I, I get to see, you know, quite some lore when technical content uh, during a year, uh, but seeing it uh, concentrated and contributed by our very own community using our own products, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm mostly amazed by that. Um, and uh, and also the, uh, that, you know, we, we can pull this, this off even just in three months after our face-to-face uh, -face conference in Amsterdam. So, so many things happened in only a few months. So. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, same here. I think I think first of all, it's, it's really nice that uh, people uh, in the ecosystem share their knowledge because you can also say that is like, for instance, their core competence, which they build their business on. So, um, so that's that's super cool. And I, I think I was watching the live stream of the balloon, and there was like hundred people watching. Yeah. In the <laughs> <laughs> so and I was watching it myself as well. I think the whole team was watching it, and it's I'm just sure super cool. It's like building up tension is like I don't know, like you could make a TV show out of it or something. Okay. But um, uh, so maybe it's 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 even a bit therape therapeutic or something. But so 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 that was uh, that was really cool. And we've got like uh, like 24 hour long. There was constant uh, constantly uh, people watching. Right, so it's yeah. it really shows that it's it's uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's all around the world, and um, so that um, that was uh, was really nice. And I think my last point would be uh, there there was quite a diverse diverse uh, diverse content, so a lot of different angles. And uh, the the reason why IoT is hard is because uh, the the scope of competences is very big and very broad. 
and you need to know a, a lot of things about a lot of uh, small bits in the technology stack. And um, uh, so, yeah, you need to know a bit of everything if you want to put it all together. And and I think that that got yeah we we, we touched uh, uh, and the uh, the speakers touch everything there. So yeah, that that was nice. Yeah, you have to be a little bit of an expert in everything and then put it all together. And if you're not, be able to source the right people. And I think that's something that Things Network is really good at it, is providing those people. So there's now this massive network that these people could get in touch with as well. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And we've got a lot of really nice shout outs on the chat channel. So thank you everybody for okay. that. I hope you guys can see that. And um, we might take this moment to thank the um, tech teams as well for all their work in the last 24 hours. Yeah, for sure. You guys want to say anything about the people behind the scenes? Yeah, no, of course. As the, the, uh, somebody's uh, putting some extra fire in the thing. Behind that's really the good. scenes. That's my team. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that tech team as well. No, um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, I mean, everything went, went super smooth. And that is that is like during 24 hours. So, um, and um, uh, and uh, yeah, Lawrence just uh, pulled a well uh, all night here yeah, and uh, made it all together. Bye. And, and uh, yeah, it's a combination of, of uh, yeah, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, like making we have all the right content from all the contributors from the ecosystem and uh, too many to to name but we're gonna redistribute all the content and make sure everybody gets all the credits and uh, lawrence and uh, and the tech team and um uh, and that's that's super awesome yeah yeah and i and i think to add here so uh like also thanks to all the all the moderators and the speakers because like we kind of had this crazy idea i think three weeks ago so we had two weeks to think about it ourselves and then only like two weeks before the conference we started inviting speakers so actually all the content that you've seen today um has all been created in the past two weeks so we actually put a lot of pressure on all the partners who first had to find speakers create powerpoint slides i don't know get get the latest updates and uh, and i'm really impressed with every what everyone came up with in just two weeks so yeah. big shout out also to all those speakers and, and workshop hosts the caliber was outstanding of all the presenters and the moderators and i'll take the opportunity to thank you all for the opportunity for having me here as well it's a lot of fun and i am passionate about everything in this space and what is working now and what we can do so thank you very much for letting me participate I've got two big questions to round up the session for you. The first one is, what can we look forward to in the new technology in the next year? Like what technology is coming up that we could get excited about or we should follow the research for? Yeah, so I can answer that. Um, so what we are uh, the big thing. So what we've seen also in the um, uh, in the in in most of the presentations was uh, our new uh, commercial solution, the things uh, enterprise stack, which is our V3, uh, but that is not available yet on a community network. Um, so I think a lot of community members are eager to get started with with our new um, software stack. So what we're going to do is to this year is migrate our community network uh, to V3. Uh, so that everyone can can use that. Uh, on the commercial side, we're going to make our cloud-hosted uh, offering available with the service level agreement, so that our cu customers can also rely on uh, on our operations. And um, yeah, I think what we see also, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, increasing professional use of LoRaWAN, and um, uh, that that grows rapidly. And we don't want to go. We don't want to um, uh, let let it go at the expense of the community network. So, for example, when we have community members that set up uh, gateways for business cases, uh, and then they migrate to our cloud-hosted commercial solution because they need a service level agreement, uh, then traditionally they would take off those gateways from the community network and connect them to their private network. And so this is really where Packet Broker comes in. It's not only a solution to exchange traffic between the community networks, but also for um, our customers to contribute back to the community network. 
and that's what we see a lot of demand for uh, in in our in our in our customers or private customers to um, uh, to contribute to the community network, and we have. Uh, almost twice as many gateways uh, connected. Uh, um, uh, our, our customers have those connected than the DTN community network. So, yeah, th those are the really the big technical things for the next year: is to interconnect um, the the entire ecosystem. Fantastic. Do you have anything to add to that, Benka? Uh, no, 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 nothing, nothing. This is uh, this is the, the, uh, exactly what what Johan said. Uh, also, um, after the conference, this, this, that story resonated very well with the uh, with the broader ecosystem. And um, um, and um, no, nothing to add there. What about the coming coming up in the future for the conferences for the community? What have we got to look forward to as far as when's the next one of these? Are we going to do a forty-eight hour one like everyone's begging you to do now? And you know, um, what do you, have you thought? Have you thought? Is that too far ahead for you? You just no, get, get home. Yeah, I think uh, with with the current situation, we cannot even uh, predict what uh, how the world looks like in uh, seven days. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't I, I think uh, we should not make predictions for further than that seven days. Uh, uh, with, if you talk about the physical world, right, around uh, events. and uh, uh, But um, we can, I think, after the last 24 hours, say one thing for sure is that this format works. Yeah. And and this format is it. So, and, and I think what, uh, what Lawrence uh, can be super proud of is that um, <clears throat> it's not just putting a conference online. It's like building a new type of knowledge sharing experience. It's not just like, okay, let's do what we did, but then online because that that usually doesn't work because you have so you have you, it's so different. So uh, so so I think we can say that. And um, how we're gonna go on with the physical conference around the world? Um, yeah, that is a that is a big question mark, but. Um, I think we can uh, can be very positive that we have a very very good alternative. Yeah, this format works definitely, and the workshops were interesting too. Did you guys get a chance to jump in there at all? Yeah, yeah, I was switching screens all the time, so uh, I had uh, three screens open at some point: the main stage, the the workshop, and the following the balloon. <laughs> wow. yeah. So uh, yeah, it's, it was really nice to see. Yeah, yeah, a lot of live live workshops. Um, uh, also, some pre-recorded. That's uh, completely fine. Uh, you know, you don't want to mess up when so many people are watching. Um, but it's, yeah, it's super interesting to see uh, technology being yeah. used live. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, and there's one format we didn't really try to push today, but we're going to put that uh, in the coming months. Is a uh, is a, a virtual um, uh, uh, wall of fame. So having uh, devices that are already connected and that you can control from remote and that, for instance, you can watch with the webcam and then you can control door opening, closing, and then you can play around with that without having it on your workbench. With That would make the whole device uh, let's say exploration experience extremely interesting, virtual, and it also will tie in with uh, with some uh, some uh, some some very interesting new technology we have coming up for device makers in the in the in the next half year. So yeah, so we we will be thinking about new new experiences and new ways how to experience technology uh, on and on and on. Yeah. So this isn't the end; it's just the beginning of the expansion and the new kind of virtual. Things network. Uh, every day is day zero, right? So yeah, <laughs> every day, every minute. Yeah. So we've just got a few minutes left. Any any last thoughts you want to wrap up, Lawrence, with this behind you now? Really, well and truly. Would you so, do it again? Uh, living on the last few hours only on, on coffee. So um, um, <laughs> I uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I think it was a very cool experience. Uh, I've learned a lot of things. Uh, indeed, like what Binka mentioned, is uh, is we gonna like somehow like we 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 stick to this format in some kind of way in the future. So uh, there there's more that everyone will hear from us um, later this year. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with all the results. So again, also big shout out to uh, to all the um, all the, the the people that listened along. And it actually was very funny. So. Um, we saw some people basically in Europe at some point people were kind of going to bed or they were checking out and then you saw like a new stream of people from the US tuning in <laughs> and actually there was a bit of an overlap there so that was super funny 
and I even found like a, a few people that I knew were from Europe that were still online in US hours. Uh, so uh, also a big shout out to the ones mm-hmm. who at least gave it a try to stay online for the, the, the full 24 hours. So uh, it was lots of fun to see. Super. Yep. Great. Everything in the in the in the channel is just thanks and thank you TTN. Thank you for awesome conference. It was a great conference and very useful. I think people found it useful and helpful. So um, it was a great wrap up, guys. Great. Thank you. Thanks for for wrapping this up. And uh, yeah, Lawrence can go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Lawrence. Oh, hi. Hi, good job, guys. Thank you. Hi. Thanks to all the viewers. Bye. Yeah, thanks to all the viewers. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.